Hello Indie Game Fan, amid the busyness of E3, there were a number of games that surprised launch during the week, so here they are in this edition of new indie game trailers, where it's nice to see some games which are available to play right now rather than some far-flung date in the future. Let's begin with the 1-bit precision platformer Garlic, a game that has been on my radar for quite a while, even featuring it a couple of times in videos previewing the best upcoming indies of the month, but for one reason or another, it kept getting pushed back and delayed. But here we finally are with the release. In perhaps a clever move, the developer has slapped some colour on the trailer as compared to his one-bit black and white look when initially revealed. Paradoxically, you play as, I quote, an onion-headed boy named Garlic who wants to ascend the secret tower in order to seduce the cyber goddess at the top. Of course, having to platform your way through, avoiding spikes and pits, and even battling bosses. It's inspired by greats in the genre, namely Super Meat Boy, Celeste, and Gato Roboto, but the platforming does look on point and enough of a challenge for fans of the genre. Looks like a pretty impressive package overall, where I love the bold choice of colours, so I do hope this showcase will encourage you to pick it up. Cloudscape is a survival farming crafting title with an action adventure element where you awaken on an uninhabited island and must find a way to survive. While games like these are a dime a dozen, there's something about this game that looks great, with decent pixel art, a nice variety of activities and some sweet looking farming elements. There is procedural generation of the island, so that every playthrough will be unique, and while there are villages to romance and a paradise to rebuild, it's not just about one island, but rather expanding and reaching multiple islands to help bring the communities on them together. Inspired by Zelda, Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, of course this will be my gem, where combat does appear to have a more prominent role in this game. It's currently seeking funding on Kickstarter with plenty of time to go, so do hop on over to check out the rewards, and if you're on the fence about this, be sure to stick around to the end of the trailer since there's a real stinger right there. always the shortest way from A to B. This old saying will prove true in the adventure that follows. This video is brought to you by Labyrinth City, Pierre the Maze Detective, one of the most striking hand-drawn games that I have ever seen, which has been adapted from a best-selling children's book series. While the books are focused on intricate and elaborate mazes where you need to trace the correct path through the environment, this adaptation is more of an adventure game, having hidden objects, puzzles, and even mini-games, all as you chase down the evil Mr. X, who has stolen an artifact known as the Maze Stone from the museum. Amazing art style which I cannot get enough of, making it a no-brainer pick. It's available right now on Steam, so for quick access, check out the link in the description or the pinned comment. I mentioned the mystical farming sim Brookhaven in my recent video covering games like Stardew Valley, 
where, let's face it, it is very similar, but it does quite literally have the elements of magic in this as it takes place in a storybook where witches, werewolves, zombies, demons, goblins, centaurs and more are all fair game in this. You know the drill, there's farming, fishing, bug catching, mining, animal husbandry and villager romance but does allow you to learn and perform magic, transforming into a bat for example, as well as some additional elements and systems that I hope will play out. For example, the children that you can have can eventually grow up and settle down in the town, so it's expanding upon some of the ideas of the classic farming sim. Impressively, this is from a solo developer who is seeking funding on Kickstarter primarily to get the community involved as well as for stretch goals, so do hop on over to the campaign page to take a look. Cleo A Pirate's Tale is a pirate-themed pixel art action-adventure title that is inspired by classic Zelda games and The Secret of Monkey Island, looking pretty sweet and is for fans of the genre. Our heroine stumbles upon a mysterious pirate logbook and sees a ghost going on a grand adventure to find the treasure of eternal memory. An adventure game with this perspective is something different, where there appears to be some cheeky references built in as well, making it a must play later this year. Developer Inco is known for their adventure games like 80 Days, stealth dropping overboard early this month, looking to be a sweet reverse detective mystery game where you play as a woman whose husband was murdered, and the twist is that you are actually the one that did it having to find some way to frame someone else for the crime. There are multiple ways to go about this with multiple endings which encourages replayability, where the idea itself is just pure genius. One of the sleekest in development racing games is Neo Dash, one that's filled with pulsating neon lights and sweet beats, where the trippy track designs and the air control given to the car should be pretty fun. Another amazing adventure game of interest is Minute of Islands, a title that has cropped up a number of times on the channel before, but decided to drop during the future games show during E3, so here it is. Our heroine wields a powerful artifact known as the Omni Switch, using its powers to repair the world on the brink of collapse, but the main draw has to be the cartoony visuals. Despite the cutesy look, it's a lot darker and gruesome than you would expect, so a kid's game this is not, but if you enjoy exploration and puzzles, this is a must get. Hello all you Martians out there, it's your turn, fix foot, soul, a bit of that old world flavour. You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars, breathe easy, kick back, and reminisce. I give up, for as much as I say that I hate golf games, indie developers always find some hook to get me into them, whether it be Golf Story, What the Golf, Desert Golf or Golf Peaks. And the next game, of course, is Golf Club Wasteland. No surprise, all I know. Human life has been wiped out, and the ruins of Earth is now a golf course for the ultra rich, teeing off among abandoned buildings and crumbling monuments. Wow, what a way to start the show. Anna Cho Chen would take my hand, her sublime take on our wonderful project called Humanity. Beautiful. Plenty more to come in to Soul Show. A show packed with stuff.
It's streamed via a radio station known as Radio Nostalgia, which is broadcast on Mars, where the citizens there are nostalgic for Earth as they listen to music from the 2020s, where the narrator in the DJ does add to the overall sense of style with this. <laughs> This is one for Tactics RPG fans since Dark Deity is essentially in the Fire Emblem down to having unique hero characters, over 54 possible character classes to evolve into, and even a grief wound system where characters can be permanently scarred in battle. There are friendships to be forged among your party members, plenty of RPG systems and leveling, a multitude of weapons and spells, and a classic setting where you find yourself caught in the middle of two warring kingdoms. I absolutely adore the pixel art, but the hand-drawn art is awesome as well. Together with great strategy systems, makes this a no-brainer, taking the number one spot. For my recommendations of the best tactics in the games, check out this video and I will see you after the jump.